All right, what's up, team? I apologize for kind of the dungeon-esque environment that I'm in. I'm downstairs. Uh, my family was still sleeping, so I didn't want to wake them up. So I'm uh, down in my unfinished basement, um, sort of in a in a dungeon background look. So uh, anyways, guys, happy Tuesday. Um, I know you're probably expecting Erica or Jessica. Um, they had some stuff going on, so I want to jump on here and maybe switch gears a little bit and just talk about something I've been bumping into quite a bit at my courses, um, in, in a good way. Um, we, we've had some great, great conversations. So uh, th this idea of focusing on your second sale, hey, what's up, Jordan? Good morning, man. So th this comes from a, a bunch of conversations I've had um, at, at our live courses around the country um, over the past few months where... A lot of folks have been, you know, we've been out to dinner on Saturday night, and a lot of people are telling me about, you know, their new side hustle and their new product they want to launch, and it's awesome because it's cool to see our profession getting more interested in, 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 in business in general. But the way I guess I look at it is our willingness to sort of sell our message which I think is what we've always underdone. Now, that's going to be done through an avenue of some sort of business or product, but at the end of the day, what we're really selling is, is people choosing conservative ways to feel better, to thrive, to live, to, um, as opposed to, to choosing more passive ways to go about it. And, and I love that. So, so the majority of the products that people are telling me about, I'm generally enthusi um, legitimately enthusiastic about. But it, it, they, they bring up this great question of, you know, Jeff, how do we know if it's working? Right. And so that's probably the question that comes up more than anything when we're having these conversations is, you know, Jeff, how, how do I know I'm off to a good start or how, how do I know it's working and, and how do I track that to make sure that I'm adjusting my efforts a, as needed and just overall whether or not I'm on the right track. And it's a really good question. And I think it's a really, really pertinent question nowadays because I think the way you have to answer that is so much different than maybe you would have answered it historically. Right. So if you think about back in the day, like if you think about, you know, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, it, it, answering that question, I think in some ways was easier because it was much harder to get the word out about what you were doing. And I think, the, you know, the, the way the word naturally got out back in the day, the way the way the word would spread geographically would be through a lot of word of mouth and through really just a lot of you delivering an amazing service and then other people eventually wanting that service and then seeing that grow, right? So if word did get out and if word did spread geographically or nationally, that really spoke volumes about what you were putting forth, right? What your product was or what your service was. If that word really got out and got a lot of momentum and steam and a lot of awareness was created, that really spoke volumes that you were on the right track. Right? I think you know back in the day that for, for those of you who were around back you know even 15 years ago looking at you know physical therapy camps and in, 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 in courses and schools it was much more regional right because that was basically how it developed you know individuals um, de delivered a great course or a great product or a great service and then the individuals in that area would hear about it from others who went and then other people would go and and you wound up developing these really strong regional camps um but it was much harder to break out to the other side of the country etc and create that kind of national awareness right so so again d decades ago I'm drinking some tea this morning. I'm having a little bit of a a little bit of a break from coffee. I've been hammering the coffee pretty hard, so I'm giving myself a little break here. Um, you know, decades ago, the answer to my colleagues' questions would have been a lot easier. You know, if, if the awareness of your product was increasing, um, the odds were really good that you were doing something right. You know, and you could sort of trust that, if you will. I think nowadays we have to be careful using that same metric, right? Because people are so connected now. Um, whether it's through social media or through email lists or through all of our different groups, the level of connection is so much more intense that if somebody is willing to commit the time and energy to package their product and to, and, and to share it, right, and to, and to do that with some level of strategy, you can almost anything can create a buzz and awareness and even initial consumption, right, even maybe that first purchase, Right. And so in some ways, gaining national awareness today says more that you are good at getting your message out than it does that your message is good. Right. Now, I am not saying that you shouldn't do that. So don't mishear me. I think it's great that we're connected. 
right? I think it's wonderful. And I think it's absolutely important um, for those of you who are looking to launch a business or grow your existing one or, or go into a new area. I think, I think that buzz um, is really important to, to create. But the reason I'm bringing it up is that now more than ever, you have to be aware of the false summit. Right. So, so when we talk about the false summit, it's this idea that you feel like you've really arrived, you know, like, like, like things are, things are really finally getting there and you're getting over the hump. And I think that that feeling is, is much easier to come across and is much more treacherous nowadays because it's so much easier to create that buzz that I think all of a sudden, if you mistake awareness for success, all of a sudden you can feel like, man, I'm really on to something. Like I'm really there. And the reality very well might be that you're not there yet because getting there usually requires quite a few hills and valleys and kind of that long trek to the top, right? Regardless of what setting you're in. And so the problem is I think that it can be a real emotional roller coaster for folks now if they feel like their, their new product, um, business service is, is really humming when the reality is they are mistaking an increase in awareness for legitimate traction. And I think that due to the fact that it's so easy to create awareness now, that is a legitimate concern. So the question then becomes, well, all right, Jeff, fair enough. If we can't use sort of awareness of our message or popularity as a really good barometer for, for whether or not we really have meat on the bones um, with our product or service, et cetera, what do we use? And that is where I would bring up a couple things um, as maybe a recommendation or as some guidance. So one of those would be to focus on your second sale. So, so, so that's the, that's the topic of the podcast this morning, right? Is focus on your second sale. And what I mean by that is, again, it's pretty easy these days to get your product in front of people. It's really not even that hard to get them to buy your stuff once. But what you really want to look at is that customer retention and that repeat consumption, right? How many people bought it and said, holy man, not only am I going to buy the next one, like this is probably the only product that I'm going to buy going forward. That is what you really want to track. Right, Because that gives you a lot more proof of whether it was just the fact that you were willing to create the buzz or whether what you actually delivered right, had ongoing merit. And it's the second one that you're really trying to evaluate in order to tweak what you're, what, you're, what you're offering the public. So I would really recommend that you consider focusing more on the second sale. So in other words, what I'm asking you to do is, is create noise. We know you need to create that noise, create that buzz, but then almost be blind towards it and really focus on two other things. One of those is the second sale. The second one is feedback from individuals who have a really good frame of reference. Right. So, so in my world, right, that would be individuals who are attending my courses who haven't, they've been going to Con Ed for 15 or 20 years, right? There is nothing more meaningful to me than when I get that email on a Monday or Tuesday and somebody says, dude, I've been going to Con Ed for like 20 years. And that was an absolute game changer. Like that, that, com- that completely is going to change my practice. And that says a lot because I have a lot of frame of reference. Like there, there was already a lot in the toolbox, right? But, but the way that you presented that um, really legitimately shifted my paradigm. That is deeply meaningful, right? So, so really look for feedback um, with, with whatever you're trying to get going. Really look for feedback from individuals who have the frame of reference that can really help you understand comparatively whether or not what you're offering has a lot of merit. I would go one step further with that, you guys. Go out there and solicit that feedback, right? So actually go find people who you feel could could give you that it really, really honest feedback that can refine your product. Again, individuals who have a lot of frame of reference and say, hey, w- will you have a look at what I'm doing? Basically have them beta test it, right? Hey, have a look at what we're doing, right? And, and, and you, can, you can have this for free or, or some significant discount, whatever you work out. Um, but what, you, what I'm looking for is the brass tacks. Like give it to me straight. Like you've seen a lot of this stuff, right? Is what we're doing solid? Cause I don't want, I don't want to get, I don't want to get persuaded by the noise and the buzz and the, I want to know from someone who's been there whether or not what we're putting forward is really worth it. Is it really going to, 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 to create a foundational shift in the way that people think? Is it going to make individuals lives better? So again, my recommendation is by all means leverage and create that noise and use social media. It's a wonderful way to get the word out, but 
Don't get led into believing that you've achieved the summit when really it's a false summit, right? Don't allow awareness of your product be mistaken for quality of your product. Instead, really focus on that second sale and talk to people who've used your stuff and talk to people who've used it a couple times and really make sure that your eye uh, or your self feedback and your critical feedback is more based on individuals who are using your product repeatedly and individuals who are choosing your product, even though they have great awareness of so much else out there already on the market. So I think those are two really good things to think about focusing on the second sale and maybe using that steely veteran um, or the individual with a lot of frame of reference to give you better feedback on whether or not what you're doing ha- has really enduring merit or whether you've been able to create buzz, but maybe the meat really isn't on the bones just yet. So anyhow, just wanted to jump on here, guys, and talk a little bit about um, about business. Um, Eric's going to be on, back on next Tuesday, um, and Jessica will be on too. I'm going to kind of jump in um, to everybody's sessions on occasion. Um, other than that, guys, a lot of great stuff going on in Ice World. Um, the fitness athlete course, I think we now have 12 live dates set up over the next year. So those guys are all over the country. Um, so check out that fitness live course. Uh, what a cool way to spend a weekend, you know, with Mitch and Ryan and these guys and, and moving a barbell and learning about movement. I think finally developing some courses where that, that title movement expert um, can actually be exploited and developed. You know, I, I, I said on Twitter the other day, you know, if we're going to call ourselves movement experts, um, a fair amount of our con ed should probably involve moving. Um, and this is a really awesome opportunity to do that. Um, great to have Justin Dunaway and Morgan back. Um, they're back from Stan- from uh, Haiti. Uh, they got back yesterday, so good to have them back. Uh, Dunaway's course is sold out in in Charlotte, but if you want to catch Dunaway teaching thrust manipulation, he does have another one in Boston, um, November 4th and 5th. So if you want to get on that, um, I would say get on that ASAP because that East Coast tends to tends to drive good volume to courses because there's so much population density. So um, Charlotte is sold out, but but uh, uh, November um, 4th, 5th is still an option for Justin. So anyhow, guys, thanks for being here. I hope you guys have an awesome, what do we got? Tuesday. Have an awesome Tuesday. All right, y'all. See ya.